Um, sure. This um, film is set in a place called Manchester by the Sea, and um, it sort of takes place over two time periods. There's the present, and then there are some things that happened in the past to, to Lee, uh, my character. Um, uh, some time ago, I was married to Michelle's character, Michelle Williams, and um, there was a terrible tragedy in the family um, that some people felt I may have been responsible for. I feel like I might have been responsible for in some way. And um, it led to the kind of separation from Michelle Williams, and I left town. Um, and then after some time, my brother died, and I come back to town to take care of his son, uh, who's played by Lucas Hedges. And uh, this town, Manchester by the Sea, is the last place that I want to be because it stirs up so many terrible memories for me. Uh, and because there are so many people there who believe that I am, you know, have some opinion about me being a bad person or having been responsible for this tragedy. And, um, and it's a barrel of laughs. <laughs> oh, that was the best. The many days I would come to set and it would be, um, there'd be really hard scenes, really heavy subject matter. And, and, um, it was, it was you lend, spend most of the day feeling sad, and then you come back and do it again. And then there were moments when, uh, mostly, as you point out, with um, Lucas Hedges and uh, and a few with Michelle Williams, where it was really funny. The writing is great. It's very sharp. Um, it doesn't feel jokey. It's really my kind of comedy. It's uh, I don't. You don't have to have a you know big, broad, silly thing to make me laugh. I I, I like these kinds of laughs much more when. Uh, they're situational and it feels like real people. Yeah, I'm not sure. There was some. There was. There was. Uh, Matt. There were a few people involved in the story, um, and they sort of hired Kenny to write it. Yeah. And um, which is a pretty smart move. He's he's one of the very best that you can get. And uh, so he he came on and they had a, just a seed of an idea, and then he wrote something you know really extraordinary. To come I well. know. I don't but... think he's ever been there. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. It really yeah. is. I mean, it goes just goes to show you that, like, he, you know, he wrote a movie, uh, You Can Count on Me, in upstate New York, yeah. and he wrote Margaret, which is set in New York City, and very different people, and he's written uh, plays that are set in one set in um, the South somewhere, and, other, and, and they all sound really like they were written by someone who, who spent their life there listening to people talk. Um, so you might think, oh, he just has a great ear. But I think that he's sort of tapped into something more universal, which is just how all people talk, and it doesn't really matter the like provincialisms of accent or slang or the rhythm of the here or there are the kinds of things that you can just sort of pick up. And really what's important in the writing is the story you're telling and how you treat your characters and depict them and, and their struggles and so forth. Uh, I don't know how he does it. It's like magic, but he does it. And all the characters always seem like very complicated, very real, funny, sad, complete people. Yeah, I think there's a scene that my character has where he's talking to the police after this, this tragedy and his family, and he's um, and they just let him go, and he doesn't want to be let go because yeah. he feels responsible, and they say, listen, you made a mistake, the kind of mistake that, you know, probably a hundred other people made that, you know, this weekend, and um, uh, you just were unlucky. Um, so... It, it's it's not really something he did that was malicious. It was just the kind of th sort of thoughtless, you know, the way that all people sort of cut corners a little bit throughout their day. You go through a yellow light, you just hope you don't kill somebody. You know? Completely. I mean, there are a lot of ways to prepare for a character, and sometimes you kind of do. You have to like focus on the thing that you're the, the is your weakest point. You know. Um, uh, so if I were playing a. Someone who had spent 10 years living in the Amazon, well, I'd better go there and figure out how to survive in the Amazon. In this case, I had been to, I knew the area. I didn't have to go and spend time there. I knew the accent. I knew sort of how, how people lived and so forth. Um, and as you point out, I had this incredible, incredibly well-written blueprint, and I could rely on the text. I knew that it worked. I knew that... Um, that they weren't going to find holes in the logic of the story or the scenes or the character. So the only thing that I had to do was kind of show up on set and be able to be in the right emotion, you know, be feeling the right thing in a believable way. So that if I my scene that day is to go and, and you know, go 
make sure that my brother's body, that that's my brother, and say goodbye to the body and so forth, that I'm, you know, sounds sort of stupid, but I'm not in a sort of like, you know, good mood. You know, you got to yeah. show up there and you got to be ready to sort of be, be uh, upset and have it be believable and real. So, so in some cases, it was, in some uh, way, it was a very easy job for me uh, because I could only, I could just have to focus on that one thing. Um, I had total faith in Kenny. I knew that all the other actors were great. Um, I just had to sort of be able to inhabit the, the emotion of the character. Well, I can't be his guardian. Well, your brother provided for your nephew's upkeep. I think the idea was that you would relocate. Relocate to where? Well, if you yeah. look. Where are we going to the orphanage? Shut up. Get in the car. Can't obey your orders until you unlock the door. So that's the Lee Chen. I'm just a backup. Lee, nobody can appreciate what you've been through. I just said a lot of terrible things to you. My heart was broken, but I know yours is broken too. No, you don't understand. There's nothing there. Not I you don't want to be my guardian? That's fine with me. All my friends are here. I got two girlfriends, and I'm in a band. You're a Janda and Quincy. What the hell do you care where you live? Wrong with me. Do you want me to call your friends? <laughs> what do you want me to do? Kokoro mo namida mo, uskushikatta omoi de mo, sube te o uite kita kono